Millions of Americans took time off to travel. Now health officials are worried it could lead to a rise in coronavirus cases. A vehicle fire causes a commotion in a north side neighborhood. What investigators say may have caused those flames. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we begin with some late breaking news this noon. Right now, police investigating after at least one person shot and killed a man on the west side. Gunshots rang out in the 2300 block of Culebra Road this morning. That's near North General McMullen Drive. According to officers, witnesses told them some sort of fight broke out. Then a vehicle pulled up. At least one person inside that vehicle pulled out a gun and started shooting. The victim was hit four times. Police say EMS tried to help him, but he died at the scene. The suspected shooter drove away before police even got to the scene. At this hour, police have not announced any arrested. As the Labor Day weekend winds down, there are new fears about the pandemic as Americans rack up stadium attendance, bleacher beaches, and airports. Millions of Americans are traveling to bid farewell to summer. However, as ABC's Alex, Alex Perche reports, there's a fear that COVID-19 cases may rise as a result. As Americans celebrate the final holiday of the summer, large crowds are causing COVID concerns. This weekend saw packed beaches, national parks too. More than three and a half million people screened at U.S. airports between Friday and Saturday, about the same number of Labor Day weekend travelers as in 2019 before the pandemic began. Touchdown again! And college football resumed. The University of Michigan hosting its home opener, more than 100,000 people back in the stands. But the pandemic is far from over, as parts of the country see a steady rise in cases and hospitalizations. The U.S. is averaging roughly 150,000 infections per day, and more than 1,100 people are dying from COVID in the U.S. daily, most of them unvaccinated. Some hospitals are struggling to keep up. Nobody's masked, and people are like, yeah, it's all open, it's all free, and it's devastating to me. Across the country, some schools are being forced to temporarily close. In Texas alone, our ABC station KTRK reporting at least 45 school districts with more than 40,000 students have shut down in-person learning because of COVID infections. I think Delta variant being more contagious than previous you know, variants of the coronavirus is just a, kind of a game changer for pediatrics. If we want to protect kids, adults around them should be getting vaccinated. I think we can get kids back to school safely. We're going to have to monitor that schools don't drive more infections. Uh, but I do think what we re really need to do is make sure that the adults in their lives uh, all have the shot. And now some new questions about when booster shots will be available. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling CNN that Pfizer's booster will be ready by the Biden administration's September 20th target. But Moderna's could be delayed. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. And two schools in our community are extending the holiday weekend because of rising coronavirus cases. In Floresville, students will not have class tomorrow. The district says it will take the time to deep clean all buses and campuses. And in Hondo, schools are closed through Wednesday this week. That district says it's trying to slow the spread of COVID-19 among students and staff. It hopes an extended break will help get infection rates under control. Last week, the district called, canceled football games after several players and a coach tested positive for the coronavirus. And since today is a holiday, that means some city facilities are closed today. That includes the municipal court, all metro health clinics, including WIC clinics, city COVID-19 testing sites are also closed today, and San Antonio libraries are closed as well. We will have a full list on our website. Just go to ksat.com. Also on KSAT.com, if you opted for a staycation like us, there's no reason why you can't enjoy the same views as beachgoers. We, list, we have a list of live webcams that provide shots of Texas beaches. Take a look on our website right now. And speaking of beachgoers, there's a wow. shot of the beach at South Potter. Ooh, that looks nice. The that water's looks really actually... great. Looks beautiful. Looking blue, isn't it? It is. It kind of nice. fades into the sky yeah. there. It's a beautiful, beautiful day to be out on South Padre. And here in San Antonio, we're getting hot. Temperatures are starting to soar into the 90s. Now, a quick check of the aquifers shows that it is down a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours, and we are still under stage one water restrictions. In the pollen count today, no real worries here. There's four allergens, and all of them are low. But we just took a look at South Padre. Let's take a look at San Antonio. It is sunny and 
We are warm. It is 92 degrees. Warm being an understatement there. It's hot outside. 92 with a heat index already of 96, although it it's not as humid as it could be this time of year. Now I know it looks like there's absolutely no chance for rain today when you look outside and you see the sunny skies. However, there is actually a chance for a few isolated thunder showers this afternoon. So for your Labor Day forecast, we're going to be warming up awfully near 100. We may just get to the triple digits today, but in the afternoon between 3 p.m. in the early evening until 9 p.m., there are going to be a few storms out there. So coming up in the forecast, we'll detail that a little bit more. And I've got to look at your travel forecast in case you're planning on hitting the roads later today. Thank you, Sarah. A stolen vehicle found in flames and a San Antonio police officer is blown back after it explodes. This happened just after one. This is in the 1700 block of Larkspur Drive, not far from West Avenue in Lock Hill Summer. Stephen Gavaslo shows us the destruction and questions now left behind. A San Antonio police officer is blown back 10 feet after a fire consumed this vehicle. According to SAPD, the officer attempted to extinguish the flames, but the vehicle exploded as he approached. This happened on the city's north side early Monday morning. The vehicle, which was reported stolen, was left at the intersection of Larkspur and Baltic Drive. Nearby residents spotted the flames and contacted authorities. Crews with the San Antonio Fire Department were able to get the scene under control, but the flames left the vehicle destroyed. Two air conditioners were found inside, which police believe may have been stolen. Suspects were also spotted leaving the area, but no description has been provided. The police officer that was blown back was checked out at the scene and thankfully is expected to be okay. The investigation is ongoing. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT. 12 News. A driver is hurt after crashing into a park truck and several people were inside the truck at the time of the crash. It happened just after 10 last night, just east of downtown in the 2000 block of East Houston Street. That's where SAPD says the driver of the red vehicle veered and hit a park pickup truck with three people inside. The driver who hit the truck was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The three people in the truck were taken to the hospital but should be okay. And cleanup is underway following an early morning house fire on the northeast side. Fire crews were called to the home in the 5800 block of Fort Laramie around 1.30 this morning. That's near I-35 and Weedner Road. San Antonio firefighters believe the fire was sparked from a lit cigarette the homeowner thought he put out. Crews were able to extinguish the flames quickly. No one hurt. Damage is estimated at around $2,000. The UTSA Roadrunners start the season off with a very impressive win on the road. Highlights coming up in sports. And it's a perfect day to get lost in a book. Today is National Read a Book Day. When we come back, some free reading activities available at San Antonio Public Libraries. Welcome back. September is a book lover's dream. Today is National Read a Book Day, a day to silence the noise and technology and maybe turn a few pages for a while. September is also National Library Card Sign Up Month. Reading can, of course, transport you into a different world experience and help you relax. So while you're enjoying the day off, maybe read a few pages of that book that you have at home. Select San Antonio Public Library branches have an outdoor display of a children's book. If you want to get outdoors, it's called Story Walk, and it's about reading out and being outdoors, staying physically active. Currently, there are three Story Walks on display. That's at the Schaefer Branch, Gilbert Gattasa Community Center, Forest Hills, and Parman Branch, which we visited in Stone Oak. This story walk in particular is Looking for a Moose by Phyllis Root. Um, each story walk that we have throughout our system, again at select locations, um, will focus on a children's book and it'll have different, different pages of the book on wooden stakes throughout a walking path or a trail so that people, parents, along with their children, can enjoy the book as they stroll through nature and the wonderful sites available at our library locations. Another offering exclusively at Parment Branch at Stone Oak are their stationary bikes with a desk. There you see it. You can set your book and you can stay cool yet active while you read. It's totally free. All you need is a library card, which gives you access to over 2 million physical and digital materials, including audiobooks and ebooks, as well as study rooms and online homework help. 
Outside with live cam, the way things are going today, it may be better to read inside about being oh. outside than actually be outside. <laughs> yeah, because of two reasons there, David. First, we got the heat. All right, it's already 92 degrees, but then later on this afternoon, closer to dinner time, we're expecting a few isolated thunder showers out there. Now, I want to show you a look at the temperatures outside. It's interesting because our average high temperature this time of year is 92 degrees. We are already at 92 at the San Antonio International Airport. It's 94 in Stinson, 96 in Divine. Still in the 80s, though, up in uh, Comfort. It's 95 in Del Rio, 95 in Catula. If we were to hit 100 any time over the next few days, today would be the day. We've got a forecast high of 98, and some folks are going to be traveling home. If you're traveling across the state of Texas today, just know that I-10 in both directions will have areas of showers on it, uh, likely later on this evening. And in fact, that does include San Antonio. So we'll have a look at your forecast coming up in just a bit. Details on when we could expect some isolated showers around the Alamo City this afternoon. David, it's already 92 degrees. Are you after work? Do you have any outdoor plans or are you going to? Unfortunately, yes. The horses. Yes. Oh, what about, yeah, what about, what about them? them? They're getting their feet done today. Oh. Ooh. And you got to do that outside. You could do it like in the shed, but they're not, they're not happy about being in the shed when they get their feet done. About what time do you think you'll be done? About three, start about 3.30, be done about 4.30. Oh, I think you might actually escape some of the rain there, David. So that's some good news for you. Although but that might cool things off. It would. It, I know. It's a bit of a double-edged sword today, isn't it? Because yeah. it's a holiday. People are Ooh. outside enjoying some time outdoors. But they might be dodging a few showers here and there, especially closer to dinner time. Uh, let's take a look outside. Yeah, it, it looks like it's not going to rain, does it? It's totally sunny out there. But I'll show you the satellite imagery in just a second. 92 degrees outside right now. This is already uh, what we usually experience for our afternoon high this time of year. So we're warming up. 96 is the heat index. Dew points are in the upper 60s. Showing you the satellite imagery, again, totally sunny around Bear County. There are a few clouds. One thing I want to take a look at is up in Kirk County. Can you see those tiny cumulus clouds that are developing? These are usually what we see as a precursor to some showers. As the puffy cumulus clouds, they start to develop. Develop. So there is a possibility for some showers and storms this afternoon. Not everyone is going to see rain, but if you do have plans outside, it may be a good idea to have a backup plan to just duck inside really quickly if you're one of the lucky ones to get some rain. Meanwhile, it's 95 in Del Rio, 95 in Catula, 90 in New Braunfels, and 92 in Gonzales. There is a stationary boundary just to our north. Again, right where those cumulus clouds are starting to develop, and they the boundary extends all the way out into Houston. And in fact, when I show you the, the radar and satellite further out to the east, look at all that rain across southern Louisiana. Along this boundary, that's where it's going to allow for a few of these thunderstorms to fire up this afternoon. We'll have to wait until 3, 4 to really start to see some activity on the radar. But look, uh, as we head into the later afternoon and early evening hours, we start to see some thunder showers on the future cast here. Isolated to scattered in nature, so again, not everyone is going to see rain. With the loss of daytime heating, the rain will go away. It may take a little bit of long time, a longer time since after sunset for the rain to fully go away. Sunset's at 750, and we should have a quiet uh, evening after about 10 o'clock. And then tomorrow, that boundary is still going to meander around south central Texas. So tomorrow we have a 20% chance for isolated rain once again in the afternoon during the peak heating hours of the day. So for the rest of your Labor Day, from 3 p.m. onward until about 9, we're going to have a chance for isolated showers and storms. It's going to be a hot one, okay? We're already at 92 degrees. We're likely going to get very close to 100, but as David was mentioning, if you do get a shower or even if a shower is nearby, you don't see any rain but if you see one off in the distance, odds are you're likely going to get some rain cool air, and that could dip us down even into the 80s. Uh, we'll have north winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun sets at 750, and again, that's a benchmark because after the sun sets, we, we lose that daytime heating and we start to see the rain wind down. It'll be mild and near 80 by midnight. So again, a couple of things to know. Best chance for rain, 3 to 9 p.m. Not everyone will see rain. It will not rain everywhere, but if you do 
do get a shower, a quick quarter to half an inch of rain is possible, as well as gusty winds and some lightning. That could be possible as well. So keep that in mind. If you hear thunder, go inside when thunder roars, go indoors and just make sure to, to have a backup plan if you have outdoor plans. Then it's going to be nice and drier, lower dew points through the later part of this week. But in the summertime, dry air means hot. It's still going to be close to 100, but we just won't have as much humidity. A quick check of the traffics. There's Hurricane Larry in the open Atlantic. He's going to be a, a, a hurricane for the fish. All right, he's not going to really impact much of the land directly. However, there will be rip currents for the East Coast. Uh, but here in uh, South Central Texas, we really won't have a risk for a tropical storm in the next seven days. There is, however, a possibility for a development into a tropical cyclone over the northeastern Gulf in the next 30 in the next five days, about a 30 percent chance that will not affect Texas's weather. So just to summarize everything for you, an isolated shower storm today from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Similar story tomorrow, just not as much coverage. And then it's not going to be as humid, but it's just going to be as hot in the week ahead, close to 100 degrees every day. David, Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. It was a big weekend for the Aggies with a new quarterback. And it was a big weekend for the Longhorns with a new quarterback. Highlights coming up. UTSA called it the Triangle of Toughness. Not only works at home, but apparently they know how to pack it up and take it with them on the road. They were in Illinois over the weekend, taking on a Big Ten team, the Illini. They opened their season with a win over Nebraska. Talk about a big road win. The Roadrunners never trailed in this one. Frank Harris led UTSA to a 94-yard drive, finished it with the TD in the lead. Roadrunners went up 14-0 on this Brendan Brady 7-yard run. They led 20-14 going into halftime. In the fourth quarter, Harris got another TD, this time through the air. Zakari Franklin on this 19-yard pass. Brady allowed that up. Another score in the second TD of the game on a 33-yard bust up the gut. Sinceri McCormick rushed for 117 yards. Illinois almost tied the game in the fourth, but offensive pass interference was called on Luke Ford. The Roadrunners hung on for the 37-30 victory. It just shows that, you know, if we buy into the culture, um, that we're capable of doing things like this. And, uh, you know, just going out there every day and practice competing against one another. And I was actually showing now going against opponents and a big time opponent like this. So it's just a great thing for the program. Leading into this game, we prepared like we were the better team. And we came out on top today and just Coach Trailer just told us not to eat the cheese. We used to see people on Twitter talking about, oh, UTSA went by this much. Blah, blah, blah. So he's just saying don't eat the cheese. And sure enough, we prepared like a winning team and we, it reflected today. Don't eat the cheese. The fight in Texas Aggies hosting Kent State. They should have won big, and they did in their season opener. Haynes King making his debut as the new Aggies quarterback. They welcomed a full stadium to Kyle Field, their first full crowd of two years. But Aggies started off slow. King got off to a very sloppy start. He threw three interceptions, first two in the second quarter alone. So it was up to the defense to jumpstart the maroon and white. That came with Leon O'Neill, who kept Kent State from tying the game at the first half with his first interception. And then again in the third quarter when he stepped in front of the intended receiver and he's bringing it all the way back. That's a touchdown, 85 yards, diving into the end zone. Just put a little exclamation point on the return. Here we go. There we go. Devon Agney added to the lead with a 63-yard TD. The Aggies scored 17 in the third quarter. Then King settled down to find Aeneas Smith for his second TD of the night. Here it comes. There's the catch, the run, the score. The Aggies route the Golden Flashes, 41-10. I'm sure Coach is going to tell me something about the dive later on, but I don't think I did anything wrong at the moment. I was just super, super juiced up, and I just got it in there. Wanted to get my hand over. I always had, like, you know, I used to play quarterback for a little bit in uh, middle school and high school for, like, freshman and sophomore year. So I was just like, I did it before. I'm going to do it again, you know what I mean? So that's really what it is. Leon is such a big part of this team, you know, big emotional guy. Um, he always had – he's more very emotional on the football field. So, you know, we fed off that, and um, he just made a great play, and, and I'm happy for him. Just don't hurt yourself. The Texas Longhorns also got out of the gate with a solid win with new head coach Steve Sarkeesian and new starting quarterback Hudson Carr. The star of this game was running back B. John Robinson. Rushed for 103 yards, but also was on the receiving end of Carr's first ever touchdown pass as a new for starter for the Longhorns. Then Carr also found tight end Cade Brewer, and just like that, Texas with a 14-6 at the half. Robinson scored again, this time on the ground on a 70-yard 
score. Card followed him with a three-yarder of his own. Promised Casey Thompson did get some playing time at quarterback, and it's paid off in the fourth quarter when he's going to find Jordan Winnington as the Longhorns go on to route Louisiana. 38-18, Robinson finished with 176 yards in both rushing and receiving, and Winnington finished with 113 yards receiving. Getting Casey in there, I think kind of middle of the third quarter was roughly around when we did that, and then letting him play in, play about a quarter and a half of football, Hudson getting two and a half quarters. Um, it's, that's big for us, you know, with, with neither guys with a, with a lot of experience. For them to get that opportunity, I think, is going to be big for us uh, moving forward as a team. So all in all, that was effective um, of those two guys having the opportunity to play and, and playing pretty efficiently. So pretty solid start for the Horns, the Aggies, and the UTSA Roadrunners. Those Roadrunners, man, that was pretty good. Yeah, UTSA. You got it. <laughs> All right, photographers are taking part in a competition, hoping they snapped award-winning pictures. How the event aims to promote wildlife conservation through humor, that's coming up in the next half hour. The desperate attempts to escape Afghanistan continue. One group says hundreds of people, including Americans, are set to fly out of the country, but the Taliban has been blocking those flights from leaving for days. The White House now says there are about 100 Americans awaiting evacuation. This weekend, General Mark Milley visited Ramstein Air Base in Germany and said Afghanistan could soon again become a cradle for terrorism. Meantime, the Taliban says they have taken control of the Panjshir province north of Kabul, that was the last holdout of anti-Taliban forces in the country. As the 20th anniversary of 9-11 years, many families of members of victims are still dealing with the anger of losing their loved ones. One study which tracked the negative emotions in the aftermath of 9-11 showed the wrath and anger were present in the moments after the attack and increased steadily the more Americans learned of the tragedy. Dr. Felix Torres is a clinical and forensic psychiatrist who has worked with survivors and families of loved ones who died in the tragedy. He's seen the gamut of emotions, but for many, the most piercing and enduring emotion is anger. Anger can manifest itself in many ways. It could be directed at other family members. It could be directed at the government, the terrorists, uh, even themselves uh, and, and their loved ones who were lost on that day. The attacks took the lives of nearly 3,000 Americans. Some people in California can finally go home. This comes after tens of thousands of people left South Lake Tahoe due to a massive wildfire. Crews there have managed to stop the flames from spreading. Evacuation orders for the resort were downgraded Sunday to warnings. However, authorities warn that Tahoe residents aren't out of the woods yet. Authorities say people need to bring their own supplies and those with health problems should stay away because of the smoky air. Now to the latest on the impact of Ida, a full week after it first made landfall in Louisiana as a hurricane. ABC's Rena Roar reports more than half a million people are still without power as the cleanup efforts continue in the south and the northeast. Entire communities across multiple states destroyed. Hurricane Ida severely damaging homes and businesses. Part of this car wash ripped apart. Chunks of twisted metal tangled in branches. And it was swirling and all of these red pieces are thin. That's part of the car wash. I was here for all of them. Betsy, Katrina, you name them. This is the worst. The death toll now at 68 people across eight states, hundreds of thousands still without power. I have a three-year-old and she don't understand. We can come home and she keeps on every day. Mama, I want to go home and it's hard. It really is because she don't understand. Like we can, like you can't live like that. You know, you can. The mayor of Grand Isle says recovery will take months. Look like a bomb went off. We have no water. We have no electricity. And we have no food. Similar scenes in the Northeast. Many families now without homes. Some in Pennsylvania asked to conserve water because of extensive flooding and power outages. New body camera video released by the NYPD shows officers diving into a flooded apartment to try and save a family trapped inside, but it was too late. 
The cost to rebuild and repair the damage inflicted by Ida is already estimated to be in the tens of billions of dollars. We not only have to get people back on their feet, which we will do, and it won't be overnight, but we'll stay with them the whole way. But we've got to, we've got to do the stuff uh, that we know we need to do that makes us more resilient. Some people are expected to be without power until the end of the month. On Tuesday, President Biden will travel to some hard hit areas here in New York and in New Jersey to get a firsthand look at the devastation. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Outside with Lacka, I think what the amazing thing is the death and destruction in the Northeast after it hit so hard in Louisiana. Man, that thing is just... Absolutely. And a lot of that is because folks up there in the Northeast aren't used to those tropical downpours, mm -hmm. you know, that we see. It's heavily populated, a lot of concrete in that area. So tragedy, of course, because of Hurricane Ida, which eventually just brought those tropical rains to the Northeast. Now, here in San Antonio today, we do have a chance for some rain later this afternoon and into the early evening hours. It is a big travel day across Texas. So if you're here in San Antonio and planning to leave in the next uh, few hours, or so if you're going up to Dallas, it's going to be sunny. If you are, however, heading along I 10 out toward Houston, know that there are going to be some thunder showers in the uh, later part of the day here down to Laredo, mostly sunny 103 in Laredo, Brownsville, the RGV, partly cloudy near 100 and then out toward El Paso long drive for you out toward El Paso, but mostly sunny and near 90. Now we're already at 92 degrees here at the airport. Again, that is our average high this time of year. We could very well hit 100 degrees before for our chance for rain later on today. 94 in Bandera, 97 in Divine, 94 in Pleasanton, 90 in New Braunfels, and 90, uh, 86 rather up in Canyon Lake. So a little bit cooler in the higher elevations this afternoon. Of course, people are going to be firing up the grill. They probably already started to fire up the grill. Here's your grilling forecast for the rest of your Labor Day. Yep, those hot dogs say 30% chance for storms this afternoon. Again, between about 4 p.m. 9 p.m., that's the time to see some rain on the radar. It will not rain everywhere, but where it does, you'll be lucky with some rain and some rain-cooled air. I'll be back to talk more about today's chance for rain and a look ahead to the work week in just a few minutes. David, Alicia. Don't let those hot dogs get wet. <laughs> Labor Day weekend is usually a slow one for the box office. Not this year. Look at the three-day estimates for the top five films coming up in the spotlight. And the world's oldest single malt scotch is looking for a new home. How you can be the proud owner of this bottle after the break. Millions of Americans are facing financial problems. That's because they're losing an enhanced federal unemployment benefit. And millions more will see paychecks reduced by about $300 a week. ABC's Yadre Bolton explains there are four types of federal unemployment benefits that are ending. Approximately 12 million Americans are in a very different financial situation today than they were last week. Nine million Americans are losing all of their federal unemployment benefits. Another three million will see their weekly benefits reduced by about $300 per week. There are four types of federal unemployment benefits that are ending. These programs covered a range of workers, including the PUA, which covered Americans who were typically ineligible for benefits in the past, such as gig workers and the self-employed. One important note for all four of these programs, they pay retroactively. So if you were laid off during the pandemic, but for some reason have not yet filed a claim or your claim has not been processed, you can still receive benefits in a lump sum. As for checking on what you still may be eligible for, depending on your state, you may be eligible for extended benefits, which typically give workers an extra 13 weeks of payments. Go to your state's .gov website as a start. Additionally, if you and your state qualify, you may also be eligible for high extended benefits, which usually provide another seven weeks of payments. But it is worth noting the HEB payments end on September 11th. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. In other consumer news, once you pop, the fun don't stop, and Pringles wants to keep the fun going, even in the dark. The potato chip maker is getting in the Halloween spirit with new glow-in-the-dark cans. Where have these been? The limited cool. edition packaging comes in a sour cream and onion flavor and original flavors. They are available in stores now. Why wow, supplies less those glue in the dark? I think you had to say, ooh, original. Ooh, oh, there they go. Just, ooh, ooh original. Oh, I yeah. get, oh, I missed mm -hmm. that. Sorry. Yeah.
And the oldest single malt scotch whiskey, which I don't even know what that tastes like, ever bottled is going on sale. And the price tag is going to be a little scary. Probably why you don't know what it tastes like. Yeah, you expect no to thanks. sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars at auction next month. Southby's is teaming with whiskey company Gordon and McPhail to auction the 80 year old scotch next month in Hong Kong. The whiskey was originally put into a oak cask back in 1940. It will come in a specially designed decanter and oak case. Some auction officials think it could sell between 100 and oh, 200,000, thousand dollars. That's why we'll never get a taste of that. If you don't bid, you can still get a taste though. Gordon oh. and McPhail says it's gonna plan to release 249 additional decanters of the 80 year old scotch. Didn't say how much though. Bansky's famous <sighs> shredded painting is going on sale again. It could be worth several million dollars now. Three years ago, a Bansky painted named Girl with the Balloon shocked onlookers after partially shredding itself. This happened just moments after it had been sold at a London auction house for $1.4 million. Well, now renamed Love is in the Bin, the owner is putting the partially shredded painting up for sale again next month. Sotheby's believes it could fetch $8.3 million dollars in next month's auction. It's shredded for crying out loud. Basky, a mysterious street artist based <laughs> in the UK, is famously cynical about the true value of his art. All right, well, get this. Because he is anonymous, he got away with selling some of his paintings in Central Park several years ago for just 60 bucks each. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. If people buy that, that painting again, yeah. For three point whatever million dollars. Is it just going to shred the rest of it? I hope not. Okay. I mean, and you're oh, not well. even getting the full painting. It said partially. Oh, my goodness. All right. Oh, my goodness for the weather. It's hot outside. The aquifer is down a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. In the pollen count, though, today, things look all right. You know, there's four allergens in the air, but mold, fall elm, pigweed, and ragweed are all low. We are already seeing a shower on the radar. And I. Looks like we're going to continue to see a few scattered showers throughout the afternoon. I've got a look ahead at that radar and what you can expect for the rest of your Labor Day coming up after the break. Wildlife photographers from all over the world going for big laughs. This as a sampling of the 2021 Comedy Wildlife Photo Awards announces the finalists they're revealed. Sarah Costa has more for us. Oh, man. <laughs> Try not to smile at these priceless pics that are among the finalists for the 2021 Comedy Wildlife Photo Awards. A selection of 42 images made the final cut from over 7,000 shots submitted by photographers from all around the world. Viewers have until October 10th to cast a vote for their favorite image online at ComedyWildlifePhoto.com and the winner will be revealed on October 22nd. Last year's winner was Mark Fitzpatrick, who caught a shot in the Great Barrier Reef of a turtle seemingly giving the camera the bird. The awards were co-founded by a pair of photographers who aim to promote wildlife conservation through humor. They say images like these are a reminder that wildlife truly is incredible and hilarious and we must all do what we can to protect it. <laughs> Still not happy? Really? Well, take a look or should I say listen to this exotic lyre bird at an Australia zoo do an incredible crying baby impression. <laughs> The zoo shared the video on Twitter saying the bird named Echo has the amazing ability to replicate all kinds of calls, including bawling babies, which is impressive, even if it does send shivers up your spine. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Oh, I got the goosebumps <laughs> listening to that bird cry like a baby. Can you stuff a pacifier in that bird's mouth? <laughs> no, nah, bite your <laughs> finger right off. Poke <laughs> okay, him like a daddy here. Shut up. Here, shut up. <laughs> oh man, those oh, pictures are awesome. I probably could take some of those comedy pictures of my cat Nora. Yes, Nora out. would be great. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
<laughs> well, I'm glad we got a laugh because it's hot outside and we need something to cheer us up, don't we? How about a couple of showers this afternoon? That's going to be a possibility as well. Now, one thing I will uh, caution you about is, of course, a lot of folks are enjoying some time outdoors today, even though it is very hot. And so if you have plans for maybe a neighborhood picnic or a later afternoon barbecue, I'd keep an eye on the KSAT Weather Authority a radar, our app. We were going to be updating you because there will be some showers and thunder showers in the area later this afternoon. 92 degrees outside right now. It is hot. It is mostly sunny. Winds are generally calm and we've already got a heat index. It feels like 96. All right, take a look at the satellite. Totally sunny around San Antonio, New Braunfels, Seguin. A few cumulus clouds in Canyon Lake. Totally sunny, Hondo, Sabinal, and Floresville. But look up toward Kerr County, northern Kendall County, and even over Comal County. Can you see these puffy cumulus clouds? Well, that's the precursor to rain. They're starting to develop in the vertical. And if you don't believe me, look at this cumulus cloud right now in western Kerr County. It's forming a a shower at the moment. Now that's the only rain on the radar at the moment, just to the west of Hunt there. But still, this is a great indication that as we head into the later parts of the afternoon, we are going to see some more activity on the radar. We are not anticipating severe weather, but this could would be a little inconvenient, especially if you have outdoor plans uh, throughout the rest of the afternoon. Let's take a look at temperatures around the area. 95 already in Del Rio, 95 in Carrizo Springs, 95 in Catula, 93 in Laredo, 93 in Gonzales, 90 in New Braunfels, and 94 in Kerrville. So it is hot everywhere you look. There is a stationary boundary just hanging out over South Central Texas today, and that's the reason why we're seeing some of the rain uh, chances this afternoon. Look how much rain is occurring over Southern Louisiana because of this system. Uh, now looking at the high res future cast again, we're already seeing that small shower out in Western Kirk County as we head into the later parts of the afternoon through a little after sunset. That's when we're going to have the chance for rain today. Notice that it's going to be isolated in nature. Not everybody is going to see rain, but if you do, uh, there are a couple things to look out for, and we'll talk about that in just a bit. Once again, on Tuesday, we'll start off quiet, but in the afternoon, a couple of isolated showers are possible as well, and is isolated thunder showers too. Once we lose the daytime heating, that chance for rain will be gone. So for the rest of your Labor Day, from 3 p.m. onward, there's going to be a 30% chance for isolated to scattered showers and storms. We're at 92 now, and temperatures are rising. So it's entirely possible that we could hit 100 degrees before you get some rain cool there in the area. If we did, that would be our first triple digit day officially at the International Airport where the official reading is taken. Uh, sun will set at 750 and then again, once we'll still have some lingering rain 9 p.m. 10 p.m. But it's going to start to die down after the sun sets. It loses its daytime heating uh, and the energy there. North winds for the rest of the afternoon at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So as I mentioned, there are a couple of things to know. The best chance for rain 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. today. It will not rain everywhere. OK, unfortunately, some backyards are going to be luckier than other backyards when it comes to the rainfall. But just because it's not going to be raining everywhere doesn't mean you won't get some rain cooled air in the area. And then also, if you hear thunder, that's a good indication you should duck inside anyway, uh, just because lightning can strike far from an area where it's actually raining. So if you do get rain, if you're lucky enough to get rain, you could get a quick quarter to half inch of rainfall. There will be some gusty winds with any thunder showers that develop and some lightning, of course, as well. Then tomorrow, as I mentioned, there is a 20% chance for an isolated shower in the afternoon. But in the week ahead, we're going to have drier weather Wednesday through Saturday. Our dew points will be in the 50s, which is usually quite pleasant, but we're still going to have the heat. All right, so that means that morning should be fairly nice, but the afternoons are going to be hot near 100 degrees Wednesday through Saturday. Checking on the tropics because it is peak Atlantic hurricane season. There is a major hurricane, Hurricane Larry, in the Atlantic right now. It's expected to just miss to the east of Bermuda, but still maintain its hurricane strength in the northern Atlantic. Atlantic. And then we'll be monitoring an area just north of the Yucatan Peninsula in the Bay of Campeche, where there is a 30% chance over the next five days for this to develop into a tropical depression in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico in the Atlantic. Uh, but it does not look like this particular system would affect our weather in Texas. So just to summarize everything for you, it's going to be hot today uh, with a 30% chance for storms between 3 p.m 
and 9 p.m. And then tomorrow, a small chance in the afternoon. Then not as humid for the remainder of the week, but just as hot. Highs will be near 100. Ooh. David and Alicia. Ooh. Thank you, Sarah. The latest Marvel superhero is exceeding expectations at the box office. The film set a Labor Day weekend debut record. Details coming up after the break. Song Chai and the Legend of the Ten Rings exceeded expectations, easily defeating the competition at the box office this weekend. The film brought in $71.4 million in its first three days, setting a new Labor Day weekend record. Candyman lost the top spot, but $10.6 million was easily good enough for second place. Free Guy picked up $8.7 million for third place, and Paw Patrol the movie made $4 million, falling to fourth place. Jungle Cruise landed in fifth place with $3.9595 million. From grilling to last minute Labor Day fun and even some birthday deals. SA Live is helping you celebrate the last day of the holiday weekend. So let's see what Jen and Fiona have in store for us today. Well, happy Labor Day. It is the unofficial end of summer. Boo. Yes, okay, but not boo when the temperatures <laughs> finally, you know, cool off, right? But yes, I mean, it's <laughs> ending, okay? But it's the first sign that fall is almost here. Yes, I'm excited. Right? So, do you know the origins of Labor Day? I'm going to test Jen's knowledge of the holiday with a round of Labor Day Jeopardy. So, see if you can guess some of those answers. Plus, we're learning tips and tricks from an Instagram pitmaster on how to cook the perfect steak. And Adrian Davila, cookbook author and pitmaster at Davila's Barbecue in Seguin, is going to show us how to use those brisket leftovers. And if you're looking for some last minute Labor Day fun, we'll head on over to Fiesta Del Mar, which is happening at SeaWorld San Antonio. They are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, so a lot of great food, fun, and music. Ooh, sounds great. Plus, if you want to relax with some great Thai food and a tiki drink, I'll take you out to a new spot that will have you sing Hello Paradise. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> birthday freebies for all those September babies and a special performance by local artist Katie McKenzie. All that and more just minutes away on SA Live.